Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Today, we're going to be taking a look at a clip of a fat activist saying obesity does not cause back pain, it's being caused by other medical issues. I covered a video in the past of this very same person saying something very similar, but this is not the same video, this is not a repeat. We're also going to be taking a look at a few bonus clips, including one where somebody says you shouldn't think about dieting all the time, otherwise you're worshipping it, and another one where somebody says everybody gains weight as they get older so be sure to stick around until the end. Before we proceed, please click the like button so that I may apply a comb to mustache. You don't have back pain because you're fat. You have back pain because you have an injury or an illness that's going undiagnosed. Oh, so gravity is not real. Being fat alone is not enough to cause back pain. Now, am I saying that it can't affect it at all? No, don't be stupid. Don't be stupid. She's just saying that your weight doesn't affect your back pain. Idiots. If you have an injury, it can make it worse. Right, but even if you don't, the weight itself will hurt your back because gravity is real. If you have an illness, it can make it worse. If you have major weight changes in a short amount of time, it can make it worse. But just being fat does not make your back hurt. Only if you have medical conditions, then all of a sudden your weight does contribute to the pain. That's real weird. What if you have the medical condition of obesity? Our spines are incredible. We are just- <laughs> Dude, my spine is dope, man. All right, at first I thought you were completely insane, but when you said our spines are incredible, now you're onto something. <laughs> designed to be able to hold up our body weight if you are having right they're designed to be able to hold up our body weight and nothing more designed to be able to hold up our body weight if you are having pain especially long term especially things like sciatica get it checked out because things can go from bad to way worse in the blink of an eye thank you for telling me to go get stuff checked out i'm not sure why i'm coming to you for medical advice there are many reasons why you could be experiencing back pain and not all of them can be solved by just losing weight alone right but you won't even know if the back pain will go away until you do lose the weight and if you go to a doctor and they blame it on that and ignore your pain go to a different doctor okay so you basically told me if my doctor has a functioning brain go to a different doctor I would consider a doctor incompetent if they didn't mention my weight when I come in talking about my crippling knee pain and fatigue. And even if it is because you're fat, you still deserve to live without pain. Get it checked out. Do not wait. Even if you are fat, you still deserve to live without pain. Okay, well if the solution is to lose weight and you want to live without pain, what do you propose? Are you saying that doctors should give you painkillers? It's funny all the things that she mentioned, even sciatica. Obesity can contribute to several types of back pain, including lower back pain, sciatica, and disc degeneration. Carrying excess weight puts strain on your spine that can affect the discs in between your vertebra. Okay, so obesity can actually cause back pain and sciatica, etc. Because as it turns out, gravity is real. How about that? It's really dumb anytime a fat activist tries to act like excess weight would not have a negative impact on a human skeleton. Even if adipose tissue were not hormonally active and you weren't way more likely to get diabetes and all of these other health conditions, the very obvious health conditions that you would still have would all be related to gravity. Knee pain, back pain, fatigue, right? Excess stuff weighing you down. Next. Thinking about it more than you're thinking about God. That is, you're, you're worshiping it. If I'm thinking about it more than I'm thinking about God, I'm worshiping it. Okay, am I supposed to be sitting around constantly thinking about God? Is that what religious people think? This is the end of that sentence. If you're thinking about it more than you're thinking about God, you're worshiping it. Okay, and we're talking about like dieting or something? This hit me so hard and I'm not even religious. I don't even believe in God but I understand like what God is. God is a guiding principle. God is 
truth. God is what you believe. God is to you, perhaps, you know, something that you want to live according to. It's the most important thing in life to you if you're religious. And if something is taking you away from God and taking you away from like the spiritual realm into this physical realm, into this anxiety in your head, into constantly counting calories and macros and worrying about how much you're eating and how much you're exercising and is your body changing and all of this stuff. What are you doing with your precious one life on earth, you know? What about people that are obsessed with food? It's weird to act like eating right and exercising is some sort of unhealthy obsession, but indulging in sweet foods is not. There are a lot of people that are way more obsessive about junk food and stuff than other people are about eating right and exercising. So this can go either way. This hit me so hard because you are worshiping that. If you're devoting your time to it, if you're doing all these rituals. Okay, what do you dedicate your time to? Reading? acting, watching films and stuff. Are you worshiping those things? If you're measuring your value based on it, if you don't have a value system outside of it, you are worshiping it and that is your God. Okay, thanks for letting me know. I did not know that I was worshiping diet culture or whatever, but apparently I am, even though I spend very little time thinking about any of this crap. Actually, I don't think about any of this crap at all, except for when I'm making these stupid videos. And I've had many gods on many different diets. And that's part of the reason that I had to... You may have had many different gods on many different diets, but have you ever worshipped at the altar of... Cynical? Have you ever joined my church? Because I don't recall seeing you at worship services. Stop doing anything hard and fast regarding my eating habits. Oh, regarding your eating habits. Okay, that could have... That could have gone into a different conversation right there more than Tracy T. Why don't you just calm down? Because... I did start worshiping it. It does get to a place where it becomes your moral code. It becomes your religion. Well, that's weird. Um, so did you see any results when you went on this crazy religious weight loss experience or whatever? And that's a really scary place to be because did you consciously decide to give that much of your time, that much of your brain space, that much of your life and energy and your limited days on this planet to this thing? It should not require all of your time and energy to just eat differently from now on and get some exercise. Or did somebody else decide that for you? And who are you doing it for? My knees and spine. And I think these are really important questions to ask yourself. Whether or not you are religious or spiritual at all, whether or not you even believe in God. Because what do you believe in? And are you living according to that? Okay, so I don't understand why she's acting like you have to be all obsessive and weird just because you decide to change the way that you eat and you decide to start exercising from now on. I just eat food that I think is healthy and I don't eat junk food and I exercise. It's funny to try to call out people that change the way that they eat and decide to exercise from now on as extreme or obsessed when a lot of people that are morbidly obese are fairly obsessed with the food that they consume. We've seen it on my 600 pound life. Next, he's gonna be responding to this comment that reads, I so want people like this to have their entire metabolism betray them. At the end of the day, when we all get old, we're all going to gain weight and our body is going to do things to us that we never would have expected it to. Uh, not if we take good care of it, which I would recommend. And it happens to everyone. My father was a- No, it doesn't happen to everyone. I'm in better shape now than I was seven years ago, so. Skinny little twig for his whole life. He had a bad reaction to prednisone when he had an infection for something one time, and as a result, he gained like 25 pounds that he could never lose as okay then that's the case for everyone everywhere because it happened to your dad one time did you ever stop to consider that maybe your dad is a puss <laughs> <laughs> i'm just kidding bro i'm just kidding it's a result of it and that always drove him crazy and it was interesting seeing that this man that was like five six and weighed 120 pounds for his whole life struggling with his weight at such an old age and at the end of the day our metabolism is going to betray us if it <laughs> Our metabolism is going to betray us. One day I'm sitting here and my body just takes a crap. I've been eating right, I've been exercising, I've been doing everything right, and then my body's just like, oh. That's one of the dumbest things that I've ever heard. 
And in fact, taking care of your physical body is more important as you get older. Your metabolism isn't going to betray you. Your body is going to betray you if you didn't take good care of it. It hasn't already been betraying us for our entire lives. And even, if, let's say even if- You control your metabolism. So this idea that my metabolism betrayed me is really stupid. If you lose a huge amount of weight, right? If you lose a huge amount of weight, the odds are in favor of you gaining back a large portion of that weight. That's even if that were true, which it's not, does that mean we shouldn't try? The odds are not in favor of you randomly gaining weight back when you changed the way that you eat. That's literally impossible. At some point. So why not just give empathy to everyone and not comment on their meat sack and know that at some point... Their meat sack? Okay, so we're so disappointed in the current state of our body that we've decided to disconnect from it and refer to it as a meat sack. I mean, the meat sack in the state that it's in right now is not gonna be the state that it's in in 20 years. You control the state that your body is in now and in 20 years. Give yourself room to grow and deteriorate. If we stopped giving ourselves room to grow, we wouldn't be in this mess. Do do do. Sorry. Okay, so that was real dumb, and he's saying that if you try to lose weight, you'll gain it all back, and as you get older, your metabolism will take a crap and you will gain weight, and there's literally nothing that you can do about it. I love that can't do attitude. Thank you. I disagree. I don't think that we have to gain weight as we get older. I don't think your metabolism is going to betray you as long as you keep exercising and taking good care of your body. Next. To summarize and catch everyone up, if you're an artist who only draws skinny people, I'm going to assume that you're not able to draw fat people. How dare you assume I'm not able to draw fat people? Listen, you can insult me in whatever way that you want. You can say that I'm a moron. You can say that I'm not funny. But don't you dare say that I can't draw fat people. Now you've gone too far and therefore you're a bad artist. <gasps> if you're a fashion designer or a designer in general, I am, and you do not make clothes for fat and plus size people, don't you say it. I'm going to assume that you can't do that and therefore you're a bad designer. How dare you? I am a good artist and a good designer. I'm just not good at drawing larger bodies. If you make furniture and oh, jewelry. Oh God, <laughs> it just keeps going. <laughs> It just keeps going, man. And other things that are used by fat people and you don't make it for fat people. You're not good at making furniture? I'm going to assume that you are bad at doing the job that you do. Dude, why do you keep assuming I suck at all these different things? How dare you? How dare you? Okay, so you're assuming things about people that don't make products specifically cater to people living in a larger body. Well, we don't like it when people make assumptions about us though, huh? Mm -hmm. And therefore, you shouldn't be doing it. Alright man, how dare you make fun of my couch making business and say that I'm incompetent. I cobbled this couch myself. Whatever, I don't even know what you call it when you make a couch. I'm sure it has some very specific name. Like a cobbler is the guy that makes shoes. Okay, so that last one was real weird. <laughs> I need to learn how to draw fat people and make furniture that's capable of holding larger bodied people or whatever. So what do you think of the clips that we just saw? Can the human spine hold an unlimited amount of weight? If you think about diet and exercise more than God, are you worshiping it? And will your metabolism betray you as you get older? Leave a comment below. Happy Friday, everybody. I hope you have a great weekend. Anyway, that about does it. Thanks for watching, commenting, liking, and subscribing. And I'll see you in the next one.